Our episode begins in the world of Demon King, where the characters are embarking on a beautiful journey through the forests, lands, and regions, particularly in the region known as Unoa. Unoa is located in the northeastern direction of the Demon King's palace, approximately a three-hour carriage ride away. Charlotte was thrilled about this day as the weather was beautiful. While we see Yen, he is clasping his hands together, in perfect harmony, as he is on this journey to find himself. Along the way, they spot two individuals riding horses from a distance, but their identities remain unknown. The scene shifts to the evening, with Yen reading a book, and Charlotte stands before him, having just finished reading her book, which taught her a lot about this place. Yen advises her that reading is very useful, but you must pay attention and stay focused on the important events. At this time, Charlotte sits beside him and tells him that the book mentioned the school that Yen and Iraxan belonged to, the Athenaeum of Deceptive Magic. It is a massive school that gathers many skilled students and professors. Under a parasol, Charlotte flips through the book, looking for another place they can visit during their high school trip. She asks Yen if he will leave her, to which Yen replies that her request will be granted, but she needs to prepare and pack during this journey. Charlotte is thankful for his understanding, as she knows that taking her on a long trip would be costly. Yen assures her that she doesn't need to hesitate, and she should tell him what's on her mind. He's happy to spend time with her and wants her to experience important and valuable experiences. Yen has decided to take her on a journey, and he asks if she will be happy if he does. Charlotte blushes and admits that she would be very happy. Yen is excited about the trip and wants her to join him in exploring all the places where they can enjoy local cuisine, visit major tourist attractions, and relax in hot springs. He holds her face and asks her again, where do you want to go, Charlotte? She hesitates, not wanting to reveal her destination, as she is quite stubborn. At that moment, Yen decided to resort to another solution. He would cast a death curse on himself and die in three days. Charlotte was shocked by his words and deeply concerned for him. Just then, a stubborn green-haired girl arrived and greeted them. When Yen asked her what she wanted, she told them that she had come here bearing a special gift for them. She handed them a white envelope and explained that it was a trip to the Unoa region for two people. In the morning, Yen and Charlotte began their journey in a car, surrounded by beautiful forests and amazing scenery. Charlotte started chatting with Yen explaining how she had once hidden in a horse-drawn carriage when she was being pursued, but she didn't get to enjoy the view back then as she was terrified and the place wasn't safe. Yen reassured her that she was safe now and should relax and put those thoughts behind her. Charlotte thanked Yen for his concern, and she asked him if he wouldn't mind her company, wondering if he should have asked Iraxan instead. Yen replied that Iraxan was busy with some tasks in the Kingdom of Narrows in the east. At that moment, the green-haired girl, along with Iraxan, rode horses behind them. It appeared they had planned this journey to the hot spring to draw closer to each other. The green-haired girl, who Charlotte called, Cat Girl, explained that she had taken a paid day off for this, determined to have a beautiful day and see them getting closer to each other. The scene shifted back to Yen, who suddenly felt a shiver but couldn't pinpoint the reason for it. As Charlotte looked out of the carriage window, she saw that they were approaching the hotel mentioned in the book she had read the night before. It was the most famous inn in the Unoa region, a three-star resort with a hot spring. They were also known for various services, from food to massages, and had many loyal customers. Yen asked if this was the most intriguing hotel for her. Blushing, Charlotte confirmed it was, but Yen noticed she was lying. He confronted her, and Charlotte was taken aback because he saw through her lie. She was surprised that he knew she was lying. Yen continued to observe her, sensing that something was amiss. Then Alan continued to search the book for the hotel that had impressed Charlotte the most. He didn't know if it was on an isolated island or not. Charlotte, with great shyness, asked him to stop his investigation, as she was content with the hot spring. However, Alan couldn't stop thinking about it. He wanted to know the place that made Charlotte so embarrassed in this way. She told him that the place she wanted to go was a place where only children wanted to go. Alan understood her words, and this shortened the way for him. He kept thinking for a while and then told her that it was wonderful to do things she couldn't do during her childhood. 
This also falls under the mischievous category. He assured her that he would never make fun of her when he heard the place she wanted to go because it was childish. She could tell him anything she wanted, and he would accompany her to the place. They arrived at the hotel, and Charlotte was greatly impressed by its beauty and grandeur. The receptionist welcomed them at the Unoha Resort. Alan told her his name, and she informed them that their room was ready. If he wanted her to guide them there, Alan agreed to it. Then he asked her if the hot spring was open, and she replied that it was, and it wasn't crowded at the moment. Alan requested that they bathe in the hot spring first, and Charlotte got very excited about it. The receptionist then guided them to the main bathhouse of the hot spring and informed them that they were very happy because they were going to spend their honeymoon there. This shocked both Alan and Charlotte. Then Alan told her that they were not married at all and had no relationship with each other. He asked her why she thought so. She replied that the tickets they had were a package for lovers and couples, which made Alan realize that Masha had deceived them, as she had looked strangely happy. Next, we see Iruka and Mizune at the same hotel, but they are in hiding because they will never allow this trip to end normally. It's a perfect plan for the Lord of Demons. Iruka waits to see what the Lord of Demons will do. We then return to the receptionist, who tells Alan that he can change the package if it doesn't suit him. However, this is the most luxurious package they have, so it will likely appeal to his companion. In this case, Alan agrees to take the package for lovers and couples. Then they walked through the hotel, and the receptionist brought them the complimentary welcome drink that the hotel offered. Alan asked why they poured it into a single glass, and the receptionist explained that it was part of the lovers and couples package, making Charlotte extremely embarrassed. Aruka, who watched them from a distance, was happy that her brother would share the drink with Charlotte and act like a couple. The receptionist then guided them to the location of the hot spring, which had several facilities. They used various natural and underground hot springs. The most famous one was the open air bath, which had a fantastic ocean view, exciting both Alan and Charlotte. The receptionist asked if they had brought their swimsuits, and they were surprised because they hadn't thought about it at all. She informed them that the bath was mixed, meaning it included both men and women, so they needed swimsuits. Then she took Charlotte to help her choose from a selection of beautiful swimsuits, telling her to take her time. The girl at the resort said, We have many beautiful swimsuits, so take your time in choosing what you prefer. Meanwhile, Alan spoke to himself, wondering what would happen if he saw Charlotte in a swimsuit. He feared his heart might stop, but he didn't express these thoughts out loud. Charlotte emerged wearing her swimsuit, and Alan took her to the pool. She expressed her wish that they could stay there forever, as it was her first time in a hot spring. Alan reassured her that this was the only way to enjoy the hot spring. The resort employee then brought them ice cream, and they enjoyed it while bathing in the hot spring. Charlotte playfully mentioned that they could be mischievous in the hot spring, and Alan used his magic to ensure the ice cream didn't melt due to the hot spring's heat. Charlotte thanked him and ate the ice cream. Then the scene shifts to Uruka who comments that the only sin they will commit in the hot spring is enjoying ice cream. She mentions that she wishes her father was here to enjoy it too, so she asks the employee to bring him some ice cream. The man asks the receptionist to cast a spell on the ice cream to make it extremely cold. In the evening, Charlotte thanks Alan, expressing how they bought double the ice cream today, and thanks to his spell, it didn't melt. She appreciates that they can make this visit special and unique. The resort employee informs them that there are many tourist attractions in the area, such as diving sites, beaches, and a hill where they can observe the Fernra creatures. Alan and Charlotte are amazed by the existence of these magical and noble creatures, said to bring good luck. However, the employee tells them that it might be a waste of time to go there since it's currently the breeding season for the Fernra, and they rarely come down from the mountain during this time. Disappointed. Alan and Charlotte are informed about another location for magical creatures, which the employee recommends. She then raises the notebook she had with her and tells them it's the magical Unoha garden from another perspective. Alan and Charlotte go to their room and are delighted by the sea view it offers. Suddenly, they are surprised to find heart-shaped decorations on their bed, indicating that they are seen as a married couple. They quickly call for the receptionist, very upset with her. On the other hand, Iruka, Mizune, 
and free are listening to what's happening inside the room through a listening device, waiting for the next move of the Lord of Demons. Back to Alan, he suggests to Charlotte that they should get some rest and go to sleep, realizing that the room was specially designed for couples. He remembers the receptionist saying that when two people sleep in this bed, they can see any dream they desire. So, he suggests trying it tonight. Then Alan thinks to himself that the dream bed is a rare creation, made by skilled dream imps. He apologizes to Charlotte for the trouble of coming to this place for her, but he assures her that this bed is unique and made by expert dreamcrafters. It has the ability to sneak into other people's dreams, and he's very curious about it. They decide to go to sleep early and turn off the lights. Alan remarks to himself how comfortable the bed is, with the perfect height of the pillow and the softness of the mattress. Suddenly, he's shocked by the realization that he's sleeping with Charlotte in the same bed. Charlotte asks if he's asleep, and he tells her that he's still awake, asking if she has chosen the dream she wants to see. She reveals that she had hoped to see her late mother because she used to sleep close to her when she was a child. Alan uses a sleep-inducing light spell to help her fall asleep quickly, and she does so instantly. After Charlotte falls asleep, Alan gets up from the bed, saying it seems that the spell worked. He casts a compensation spell on himself called the Deadly Drop spell, which spreads outside the room as well. Aruka, Mizune, and Free all fall asleep, and Alan wakes up in the morning, finding Charlotte awake with tears in her eyes. She tells him that she saw her mother in her dream and that her mother spoke to her about him, reassuring him that she is safe. From another side, the receptionist knocks on the door and opens it to find Mizune and Aruka standing there. With that, our episode comes to an end. Can Alan truly protect Charlotte? That's what we'll find out in the upcoming episodes. Stay tuned.